An application programming interface is an interface that allows two programs to talk to each other. Now the term API is a broad term that is used for any two programs communicating, but this video is about a specific kind of API known as a representational state transfer, or by its street name as REST, which is an architectural style designed to guide the development of the World Wide Web. Now when you hear the term REST, think stateless, meaning it carries no information that could change over time. Instead you're dealing with representations of the data that you may have received from a database or from the client. And that is because the state has been transferred over from the server to the client. So how the REST API would work is, if somebody wanted to make a post on a social media app, then they would send out a request to the REST API and the REST API would post it into the database. Now this request when it gets sent out, it will be broken up into three different parts. The first is the request line. And it will be carrying information such as the protocol that is being used, and in this case it is HTTP. It will also contain the route that you want to connect to, and even the HTTP method, which in this case it is post. Now there are plenty of HTTP methods out there and they're just ways of telling the server what are the actions the user wants to make. Some of the most common ones would be get, post, patch and delete. Post means you want to create something, get means read, patch means update, and delete means destroy. And you may have noticed that together they make the CRUD operations. So there are plenty of other HTTP methods out there, so link in the description below if you're interested in checking them out. Now next we have the headers, and the headers contain metadata about the request that we are sending. Now these headers would be in key value pairs, and they could be as many as you need. In this case we have three, accept, and that means we need to accept a response in JSON format, connection to keep our connection alive or not, and authorization to check if we are authorized to make this request. Then we have the body of the request and that contains the data that we want to send from the client to the REST API. Then once the server receives this request, it will post it in the database and then send back a response. And the response will be structured similarly to the request with the first line being the status line. And there you would find things like the status code. And in this case, it is 201, which means the request has been successful and something has been created. Now there are plenty of status codes out there. Status codes in the 100s are information responses. Status codes in the 200s means the request has been successful. 300s are redirection messages. 400s means there is a problem with the request, as in the case of 404 it means the page was not found and status codes in the 500s means there is a problem with the server. Now underneath the status line we have the response headers and this could contain things like the date, the type of server that sent out the response and the content type which defines the type of content inside of the body and in this case it is JSON and the body of this response contains the JSON that we want to send back to the client. Now if the client required more information all they have to do is send out another request and await for another response and this is what makes every request independent because you don't need to know anything about the previous request to deal with the current request. Now stay tuned because in the upcoming video we're going to be building our first REST API with Node.js and Express. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching.